Here's a place where all of us can be safe. Our stories of transformation can be safe, and all the things we want to research are safe here. This is Safe Space with Cheyenne. I'm really excited you're here, and I hope you stick around for a while, because I've got a lot to show you before I leave Earth. I love you guys. Welcome in today, friends. We have, um, honestly, like an idol of mine, kind of, if you would say. So I found Hans on YouTube with my producer, Andy, and um, I used to watch his YouTube channel on my lunch break because he really just had some amazing concepts that just, they really stuck out to me. They really helped me pull the layers apart, I guess I would say. So today we have Hans Wilhelm. He is a author and illustrator of over 200 books for all ages. He also has a website that I highly recommend you check out. It's called lifeexplained.com where he goes through and tells you about all of these life affirming concepts to connect us to connect us with our own inner wisdom. I could sit here and act like the biggest fangirl all day, but I am so excited for you to join me on season one of Safe Space with Cheyenne Hans. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Cheyenne. That was a wonderful introduction. <laughs> Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm I'm not even kidding. Me and my producer used to watch your YouTube channel on our lunch breaks, and then we would go back to our desks, and we'd have like piles of work to do. We were working at a radio station, and I would be like, hey, did you see his video on forgiveness? Oh my gosh, did you just watch the one on suicide? And we would just keep going with all these heavy, heavy hitting, really, you know, not delightful topics to talk about. And the way that you explain it, it releases the suffering from the knowledge. I think that's the best thing that I got from it is I know that um, speaking about suicide in any facet of my younger lives, if I was a teenager, if I was like, oh, I want to kill myself or, oh, you know, all of these moments where you really did cry out for help and people were not educated on how to even receive that information. So the first thing that I got from your videos was I'm not suffering learning from him. So I'm going to continue to learn from him. So Hans, how did you come up with doing the illustrations with all of the spiritual talks? Well, so again, I've been studying spiritual path ever. I was a young person. I didn't believe what the churches were teaching us. And it was only later when I came across the material like Edgar Casey when I realized that Christ actually was the teaching reincarnation. And that is a very important element. Suddenly, the moment I understood this, this is a part of the true Christian teachings, suddenly everything makes sense. Why are people are sick? Why are people happy? Why are poor, etc.? Suddenly, it makes sense. It's all related to previous lifetimes and our actions is sowing and reaping <clears throat> principle. So this made a lot of sense to me, and I followed it more and more through. And over the years, I've studied many wonderful teachers. And... Just only 10 years ago, I started to put this into short videos, which I illustrate because I am an illustrator and writer of children books mostly, also for all other ages. So I use my gift as an illustrator to show it and how the dots always connect. For me, it helps a lot. If I get some IKEA furniture to put together and have to read how to put it together, I wouldn't understand it. But if they make drawings that this part belongs to this part and this part, then I can do it and then I understand it. And I think other people are very similar, that once you see how everything connects, how karma works, how reincarnation works, and when you visually see it, then suddenly it becomes so much clearer. We can talk about reincarnation, we can talk karma and uh, suicide and so on, but visually seeing how it all works out and how it all connects is a very different story. And they have become very popular over the years. As I said, these videos are totally free. This is not my main line. My main line is still writing and illustrating my books. Mm -hmm. I do this to share this with other people because I feel, I remember how when I was young and I was desperately looking for some um, information on these topics and there was hardly anything available at that time. Now today we have YouTube's when I started off. Of course, today I would probably would take TikTok, but it's difficult to squeeze it into one minute. What I have to share usually over five to ten minutes. And uh, so I did this video to reach mostly young people because the attention span is only a few minutes anyway. So I had to make it very short. And I follow um, Einstein's famous quote that if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you haven't understood it yourself. So I really have to make it very clear to myself that I understand it. 
And I'm learning through doing this, doing my series. I'm learning. I understand. Oh, suddenly this all makes sense. And that's basically what I do. And I share this for free. You have to join nothing. They're available. I merely offer this. I have zero interest to convince anybody that what I share is right for them or for anybody. I'm only sharing it and I leave it up to you. So I fully respect other people's beliefs that they don't share mine. And I have, as I said, no need. Uh, if you don't like it, that's fine with me too. So that's where I come from. And that is the basic, the basic story of my videos on lifeexplained.com. Well, you are doing what you should be doing because those videos found me and a few of my friends. And uh, it's definitely what I needed to be educated on in the way I needed to be educated. So I appreciate you breaking it down. I know there's so... There's the Greg Bradens of the world, right, that are going to teach us about human chromosome 2 and the gamma state and compassion and heart and brain coherence and all of that fun stuff. But I really, really enjoy having it broken down into a very, very, um, I always say, let me go back to kindergarten. Like, I'm like, let's go back to Sesame Street. Like, take me back there and build me up there. So that was one of my favorite things about finding your videos. Um, so today I did bring you on to talk about the heavy hitting topic of suicide and I reached out to you specifically because of course I watched your eight minute video of how you explain it um, and I want you to release the suffering of anybody that could potentially come across our episode today with your understanding of suicide. Um, I know I kind of honestly just played it on YouTube but I think having you live is so much better. Well, so you want me to start my... my explain it in my way yes uh, please you. take as you don't it doesn't well, have to be eight minutes by any means but what uh, is your take on suicide so my idea is uh, what i want to share here is that the youth the world as such is a very universe a uni, a unique planet because it attracts souls from all kinds of uh, levels of consciousness very highly evolved very low evolved different specialities and the other planets are not the same. You, therefore, Earth is like a teaching school. It's like a school itself. So the souls from all different kinds of consciousness can incarnate here to be exposed to different views, different kinds of entities, different energies, and you learn in a very fast time. So Earth is nothing but a schooling planet. That's why we're only here for, I think, 30,000 days or whatever it is. It's very short time, and we go and we leave. Nobody stays here. It is only a temporary visit. And from the perspective of spiritual life, it's only a very short visit, like a blink of an eye, like going to the movies for two hours and uh, totally absorb ourselves, emerge ourselves into another story and then come out and be back in our normal life. And spiritual life is very similar. We come here like a short school visit and then we leave. So the time on earth is very, very, very unique and very special. And, very, and souls come here for various reasons. They either want to learn something, they want to develop certain skills like love and compassion, or they want mostly to clear out their old karma, which means they're coming together with other souls with whom they have something to work out. So this is the main purpose. Unfortunately, there are not enough bodies to incarnate here because of, um, of uh, abortion as well as uh, in, uh, uh, sexual, uh, what is it, prevention, uh, mm -hmm. we, don't have, um, we don't have enough bodies. Therefore, it's a shortage of bodies. So to come here and to find a body to incarnate with is a privilege. So the point number one I was making across is to be here is a privilege. It doesn't look that way. For many people, surely life is awful. It appears very awful. But so does school at times. If you suddenly go to Yale and, and uh, NYU and so on, it's very tough. It's really tough classes there. And this is also what happened to many people here who go through a very difficult time. And the thing is, before we incarnate, we are usually shown our major tasks here on earth by our guardian spirit. Like, for instance, the things we want to overcome. We also shown certain kind of critical moments which we might have, where we can, challenging moments, where we are, where life can be extremely hard for us and difficult for us. All these we knew in advance. Most people are not incarnating without having said fully yes to the life we are having here. There are some exceptions. There are some souls which press themselves to incarnation. They force themselves so, uh, because they want to go back to earth and live out their mostly lower kind of life. But most of us are here to learn and to uh, face our, the, uh, the, the, the karma, which is the drama of our past, and clear it up. 
So point number one is it's a privilege to be here, even if it doesn't look that way. And because it is such a difficult school and such a traumatic school at times, we really feel like checking out. I think for anybody, everybody who lives long enough must have had thoughts of suicide. It wouldn't be quite normal. Never mind how wonderful your life is, but there are moments of challenging moments where it's just, I don't want to deal with it. I want to get out of it. But hopefully, thank God, not many people act on it. It's just said like any other thought, something you have a sexual temptation and so on, you may have it in your thought, but you don't act on it. You do a lot of thoughts we have, we don't act on. And suicide is also one of these which comes sometimes to us and we just let it pass and move on. But some people, unfortunately, really work on this thought more and more and sometimes get deeper and deeper into the possible solution, which they think is a solution of cutting down your life short here and just getting out of it. And there are, of course, many, many reasons why they do that. Sometimes because they really can't take the pain anymore, the loneliness anymore. Sometimes just even to, to teach the lesson to their parents or anybody else who, has, who they think has harmed them. Uh, so the reasons for suicide are many for And I'm not a therapist, and therefore I don't want to go too much on the uh, psychological reasons why many people do this. But I want to speak mostly about the spiritual side. So from the spiritual side, we can be on a very, very low energy. And this is also a time when sometimes negative forces, I would call negative entities, can even jump as well and really drain us even more. It makes it even worse. The vicious circuit it gets more and more, and we feel more and more drained. The drainage can come from spirit beings who are really attaching themselves to us. And it's very helpful to us to really try to get out of this as much as possible. <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, different ways how a therapist would probably help a client to get out of it. That's why I always recommend go either to the uh, ER room, phone the suicide helpline if you're serious about it, or go to a, a therapist if you can. But something simple, something like this, really something ridiculous, but it does help physically, is exercise. It's making a very brisk walk, heavy breathing and so on, just to get out of these negative funds because the energies are drained so low. And if we put really pump life, life is life force, breath into ourselves, it can bring us onto a much stronger level. So instead of sitting there, put up in our little bed or whatever, and feeling sorry for ourselves, do we try to do the opposite? Very often we think we don't have the energy to do that. But... We are never, ever alone. Nobody is here on this planet Earth alone. We always have divinity. We can call God. And never mind how you believe in God, what God is. I think it's in, within ourselves. The Bible says the kingdom is within us. So the whole kingdom is in us. We also have, if you are a Christian, believe in Christ, the Christ energy, which is in the chakra, the force energy. And most of all, somebody, everybody has, irrespective of what you believe, is a guardian spirit. The guardian spirit is here for us not to make our life for us easy, but it's here to warn us and to help us when we are in a critical situation and can guide us. And I've found it over and over again, if you read the comments on my videos, particularly on the suicide and similar videos, say often some, I happen to stumble on your videos. This is a typical sentence which you only write because your guardian spirit led you to that. That's the only reason. There, is no, there are no accidents in life. You stumble on these things because you were pushed onto it and you to, to see that and to become aware of it. So we have the guardian spirit and we can ask these energies, God, Christ, the guardian spirit, to give us strength. Not necessarily what we want to change in our life, like better parents or better school or whatever it is, but to give us strength for the next hour, for the next day, to give us strength to pull through and guide us and back to the light and back to calmness back to the inner peace and back to, to, uh, to, a more, uh, to a more happier kind of content life. They are there. They are the whole purpose. Divinity is love. And the highest form of love is service. So when we speak about God, when we speak about Christ, when we speak about our guardian spirit, we are speaking of energy which is purely there to serve, to serve us. And that we can always claim and always ask for. And they will be there and they will guide us and they can continue us. So that is a rough outline how I would do this. But now you may have some question. We can be more specific and whatever you feel you like to go. You like to go. Well, I'd like to um, point out something that you said in your suicide video from YouTube. And you were talking about how, you know, before you have the soul contracts, right? So say you're supposed to be here for like 80 years. 
but you decide to commit suicide at 65. Um, you said that they the soul could potentially go into limbo. Would that be referencing the astral realm? Or like what? I guess like well, to pull apart where the soul, soul goes, like what density or dimension does the soul go into to await the finale of the soul contract? Well, the soul contract, as you said, we, let's say we have agreed to 80 years and we cut it down by 65. So we still usually have got lessons to learn for the remaining 15 years. And usually that means in the most cases, we have to come back to earth in another lifetime because we have to fulfill the class. That is, of course, the unfortunate thing. People forget when they commit suicide that they have to finish their class and they have to come back and redo it. So I'm pleased we brought that up. Now, how we land up on the other side is very much dependent on the vibration, on the emotions, on the thought of the person who commits suicide. And when they do that, usually they are very down, but there are many, many reasons. They can be very upset, they can be very angry, they can be hopeless, whatever it is. But our main emotion, our main drive, our main feelings is what we are taking over. We leave the physical body behind. But the rest of us, our, our thoughts and thinking, perception and feelings, we take with us. That determines the like and my, like attracts like vibration. So if I am morose and sad, whatever it is, I will be attracted to that kind of environment. If I feel a little bit more relief and happy, whatever it is, I can, uh, can see that and can, uh, let's put it that way, if I am very remorseful after that, what I've done, because this is usually what happens that the afternoon to realize that we made a major mistake and a true remorse can bring us into more lighter areas. So very often it is what happens to people who die, come to suicide. They have a tremendous guilt. Once they're on the side, they feel tremendously guilty. And they feel, I don't really deserve anything in that guilt. When we feel guilty, we don't deserve anything. So that it's their own guilt which brings them sometimes into a limbo which separates from the rest and the guardian spirits can't really reach them because that comp guilt complex is so strong and so strong that it has, needs time to dissolve it. Like there are a lot of souls, earthbound souls here who are hanging around the, the, the graveyards because their the, the preacher told them they have to wait to judgment day. So they cannot move on. They believe so strongly in these things. So our thoughts and how we feel determines of where we will land and also what we have done in the spiritual world. So there are many possibilities. Not everybody lands in the limbo there. But one thing is for sure, most of them have to come back to fulfill their contact or what they have in mind to fulfill in this lifetime in another lifetime. So I have to start all over again, be a baby, go to school, etc., just to face a similar situation, which can take sometimes thousands of years before this comes again, because it implies that maybe we need to interact with a certain soul whom we have harmed or they have harmed us in a long time previous lifetime. But we can only incarnate when that soul is there as well and to the right country. So it is a very difficult situation to find that together. So right now we have the ideal situation to meet everybody whom we have to meet. But if we screw up here, we will not meet a lot of these people. And then we have to wait till the time is right that we ever can meet them again in a much later lifetime. So that is another reason to hang on, do this whole thing, stay, stay with the course, stay in the school. So yes, on the other side, there is a lot of emotions coming up. Because most of them immediately realize that they have done a major mistake. Because also what happens there on the other side, they see and feel the pain of the person they left behind, of all the family members, their loved ones, and so on. And they probably didn't care much about it or they wanted to teach a lesson. But now suddenly they see that these people are left behind. They feel tremendously guilty because they believe they caused it something. They can no longer communicate with them, but they feel guilty about it. They feel pain, they feel loss, they feel awful stuff, and their soul all feels that because they're connected. So they go through a tremendous emotional uh, pain up there, wherever they are, uh, because they are connected to the people, their loved ones they leave behind, and whom they hurt so much. And they suddenly realize this is not a computer game. I can't just make one click and then I'm start back at zero again. Because this is it, and we have made the decision, and the decision, the consequences for this decision are immense. We have to come, most likely have to come back, and we want to come back. Not that somebody tells you, now you have to fulfill your class. But on the other side, we realize, oh my God, I was so close to finish my class, to get my degree from NYU. 
And now I finish of it. I want to do it again. So it's your own choice that eventually you will reincarnate again to fulfill what you set out to accomplish in this lifetime. I just want to be like, yes, yes. I love all yeah. of it. It's perfect. There are a couple of things that are popping up in my head that go along with what you're saying, and it's from um, some other people that I admire. So, um, do you you're familiar with Dolores Cannon's work? Oh, very much so. I love her work. Yeah. Yes. Um, so there was a QHHT session um, that I think was published to her wall from a different practitioner, but there was a guy that this practitioner regressed. And um, basically, it was the first time that they had ever heard that a soul had been reset because every time he incarnated, he killed himself and he would not quit killing himself, nor making his soul contract lighter before he came to Earth because he would go up there, release all of his suffering and be like, oh, no, it's all an illusion. Like emotions are all human based. I can go back. I can do it. It's no problem. And then he would get back down to earth and literally like he would kill himself, whether he'd make it a little further past the needle every time. So she said it was the first time that anybody had ever actually had their soul reset by source to come back and do their evolution again. I haven't heard that. I don't think I've read that, Shepard. No, I don't. But, but she, she comes across strange uh, incidents. Uh, she really book. does. Yeah. That's the only story yeah. that I heard about soul reset. And then there was another story that popped up in my mind about when you were talking about how ones that, um, you know, they kill themselves, they're stuck and they're like, oh crap, now what do I do, right? Um, my friend, he's actually coming on season three. His name's Barry Littleton. He crosses over spirits. So I interviewed him about um, what do they say to you? Like why they didn't go into the light. And he said a lot of them, um, just like you said with the graveyard, their preacher told them that they're waiting for judgment day so they didn't go into the light because they were scared. He goes, but I've run into a lot of people that have killed themselves and they 100% believe that they're going to hell so they don't walk into any light and they just stay on this plane. So, yeah. I mean, there are people in the world that can connect, like Barry can talk to them and connect and try to educate them. So I think it's really important to continue to have these conversations and get the word out and, you know, get on as many shows as you can to really educate people before they get to that point, before you realize like, right, you are loved, you are not unworthy. But one of the biggest things that I realized in my relationship with suicide is the unworthy complex. And I had no idea where that unworthiness actually came from. And I did a QHHT session with a lady here in town. And I said, two of the things I struggle with um, just for my own shadow work is unworthiness and um, loneliness. And I would really, really like to know where that stems from because I know that I had to bring it into this life with me. So when we did my regression, we regressed all the way back to my soul origin and where I would have been on the theory of Dolores Cannon's like signal going out into the universe. So she was like, where were you when you heard Dolores's signal? And then I was like, oh, I was home. And she's like, what does home look like? So I started um, explaining all the people that were around me, all the things I was seeing, colors that do not exist on earth, like all of this stuff in this state of brainwave state. And um, I remember coming up from it. It wasn't a very deep regression, but I still remember coming up and feeling that um, release of suffering of the unworthiness and the loneliness. And I was like, oh, it really is all tied into the soul and the consciousness. And wow, all of this is connected and all makes sense. Kind of have you how you go back into. Um, but one of my questions that keeps repeating in my head is, how through child's author and you, I guess, having your own soul questions when you were younger, I mean, how many years have you been researching all of this to come to the understandings that you have today? Well, the understanding of what I'm sharing so far, I've been here for a long time. I mean, it came very early because I think I, I started when I, when I was 18, I did TM and personally realized I can change my life around by just but just go into meditation. I don't have to be so uh, as upset or anxious or whatever it is. So the power of thought came very clearly. Then Edgar Casey 
And that is now how many, but uh, 60 some years ago, 65 years ago, whatever. It is a long time when I started. So over, it came over the years and more and more I learned it and more, uh, the more I studied it and I found it more confirmed. So this works for me. As I said, it doesn't work for everybody else, but this is, I only share my understanding and I'm learning continuously. I am, I don't have a gift of channeling. I have no way any spiritual kind of special gift. I just understand it because I wanted to know about it. And what I saw, and what I learned over time, the most important thing I learned here as well is God is ingenious simplicity. It is not complicated. All the things which I have on my video, which are the important things of life, why we are here, where we are going, are very simple, straightforward. There are no secrets. We don't have to study for years and years some very thick books. The answers are all in us. It's all very clear and very straightforward. God does not hide from his children anything. So we can learn it all and we can grasp it all and the answer is always love. It is sort of whatever we do, we are only here to love. That's the main reason. I mean, it's a very sort of track sound way, but it is, it is what it is. This is why we are here. We are here to learn to love again because that is our original um, default setting. And we have learned, for, forgotten over the years, from incarnation to incarnation, we have done a lot of unloving stuff. And we just have to clear it up and learn from it and then move on and to become love again. The highest vibration is love and we are slowly going back to the highest vibration from where we once came. So your video um, where you did like the seven layers out, right, where we all fell from creation and then we kept falling further away from vibrations and then you put um, where Christ came in and was supposed to help push us back and all of these other people, that was playing in my head. Literally, you as you were saying all of those. I'm telling you, I studied all, your YouTube for over a year. It really, really helped me. I mean, like, I love reading the thick books, don't get me wrong, but your your short videos, direct and to the point, you're right. It's not hiding in some ancient text that you have to go find anywhere. It really is inside of you. Um, and I know that on my short journey that I'm on learning all of this stuff, I still get hit with that constant thought of, oh, yes, this is a good read. This is a good video. This is a good article. But, man, it really is inside of me. I do need to sit down. Meditation has been one of the greatest things for my mind. So I love that you brought that up. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that all of your basis is love. I think, like, well, the, end of, the end of the episode is like a compliment train for you now. Um, but I did uh, want to ask you a question. I, I pulled a line out of one of your videos, but it says comfort and evolution don't go together. So um, with us coming here and learning all of our lessons, um, how do you, you personally, balance your personal evolution while sustaining a human comfort zone? Oh, I have my challenges too, JN. <laughs> I, I, we all have our challenges. Every day we have got some challenges we have to deal with. I do, and of course, my ego wants a comfort zone. I balance it well. I have my comfort zone. But the challenges are there all the time. We all have a different form of challenges. But this is the point I bring also out in my video on suicide. Before we incarnate, we know the challenges, the big challenges which we have to face. Not every, not all the details, but the major ones. But we also know that we are strong enough to master them. We do have enough strongs. Nothing is given to us for which we have not a matching strength. So every challenge which we have, we are strong enough to face it. We may not feel that way when we are in a suicidal mood. We think this is too much for us. But on the contrary, we have the strengths. And as I said earlier, we can also rely on the strengths given to us from the spiritual world to make it happen. So no, I do have my challenges too, trust me. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. We're all about getting a little vulnerable here and getting an inside look on everybody, too. So I'm glad that you shared a little bit. Um, my goodness. But that's what we, we do have a comfort in a school, in a really hard school, which we are here on planet Earth. Comfort mm -hmm. wouldn't bring us anything further. It is a challenge sometimes for us to really see something different, to clear something up. So in this world of, of contrast, we are living in a world of contrast, which is not the absolute reality. But here's all contrast, good and evil, black and white, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There we do have the constant tension between the two. And that is where the discomfort comes from our challenges. In the absolute reality, evolution takes place, but not in the painful way as we have it here. Because there is no karma, there's always a permanent now. 
but pain and suffering comes only in the uh, um, in the um, temporary reality in the in the separation the Maya in our illusion where we are living right now, and that's where we have all these these, these negative emotions which we have to deal with and sort out and tear up to return back to love. And you have a new video out about negative energy. I'm just making a video actually that it's called uh, how your negative uh, thoughts can kill other people. So that is an interesting kind of subject, how our Powerful. negativity, yeah, how our negativity can uh, affect other people and they can then do negative things and even kill people and so on. But And then we are co-responsible. So how important it is to keep our mind and our thinking pattern as, as positive as we ever can. Not Nobody can always be positive. No, it doesn't make sense. But when we catch ourselves to be in a kind of grumpy mood, negative mood and so on, do something practical, jump up and down, do some deep breath and whatever, there are many different simple things we can do, but don't don't uh, indulge in all these negativities because they thoughts are living entities. I have a video on that one, and they can really they are don't like attracts like they're swirling around everywhere where we go, and they're finding people who have similar vibration, and they make issues bigger, bigger, bigger than they need to be and they should be. So that is just one of the new videos which I think I will release into this time something. I am very excited to see anything new that you produce but that video is right up my alley because I speak energy I study yoga and Reiki on my time off air quotes right um, and energy and the thoughts and reprogramming your brain I mean it's all I live for these days to do and get away from and I still like you said have challenges um, I've had a suicide buddy my whole life my stepmother and I have really just banded together and when we have those thoughts we're just mm. like, we don't ever like judge or question each other of why or come in like overbearing, like, oh, you're loved. You don't need to have those thoughts or, oh, no, we don't talk like that. You know, like we were really like, OK, so let's really figure out what what is pushing on what part of our brain, what part of our body, what chakra is blocked, what inner child issues coming into play. Like so many modalities have helped me really hone in and figure that out. Um, but I've always found out that. Like I've had that little button in the back of my head since I was a kid. And I, I think that's probably why the topic of suicide in general just fascinates me and all the different perspectives. Yours again releases my suffering while I study it. I don't feel guilty for having the thoughts when I listen to your research, which is why I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that one, you're doing what you're doing, but then we get to be here too. Um, and to keep this compliment train going, um, I did write down a couple of my favorite videos that you did, even though you mm -hmm. have like about 150 of them. But I love how karma works. I love the one on forgiveness, especially when you um, put the person in jail in the illustration. Oh man, I cut so many cords that day when I watched that video. I was like, oh, I refuse. I refuse to guard these people. And again, studying energy, you understand that every word you speak, every interaction you have, you're tying a cord to somebody, especially those negative ones. So just, again, you're right, watching the illustrations. I was, I'm telling you, I have a selenite knife right here and I use it all the time in my meditation to do all my cord cutting. And that day, I just felt like a massive amount of relief. So that video, for one, mwah, love the forgiveness one. I recommend it to everybody who is even like, oh, I got into a fight with my friend. I'm like, well, listen to Hans Wilhelm's video on forgiveness, and you will quit being mad today. I promise you. Um, five facts about soulmates. Probably one of my favorite. Um... And it's because it really, really um, tests my core beliefs that I too have been studying for about 11 years on the soulmate, twin flame, just soul concept topic. Um, and I really, really like your take and I really want to believe all of it. And I'm still on the fence about it, but I've watched it a few times over the last few weeks with a couple other research things I'm doing. And again, I just really appreciate the perspective. Thank you. All the kind words you have, I pass on to where I get it from. It all comes from up there, so I just only draw this stuff. So I, whatever you say, all the things I pass on to the source where it all comes from. Like your work as well, your energy comes from, and so on. So we just share the energy that is given to us 
hopefully that other people get touched by it and get a little bit more into the life. That's all that's needed, just to step out of it. Sometimes we just need one word, one smile, and sometimes to leave behind the negativity, the vibration. That's all which sometimes is necessary. That sometimes is the only reason why people incarnate, just to give one smile to a stranger in the street. And that stranger, that smile can change their life altogether. So the reason why we are here is not always such a big thing. Sometimes it's just a smile. I'm going to skip my tree branching story of when that has happened to me multiple times, but I love how you just said, maybe some people just reincarnate here just to make somebody else smile. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Carolyn Carol Meister tells a wonderful story about a young girl and a teenager who wanted, wanted to commit herself suicide, and she planned it for days, and one day from school, she came, walked home, and she was sure, this afternoon, I'm, I'm going this, and she was walking, crossing the street, and suddenly... A car came and stopped right in front of her, nearly would have knocked her over. And she looks up and there was this woman driver in the SUV and she had this broadest and warmest and happiest smile. And that went right through that young girl. And it did everything to her. And she left to see that she just uh, never committed suicide as far as at that time. It changed. The smile suddenly got her out of her negative tongue. Right, just... That smile saved her life. That's why I'm saying sometimes it's only a smile which is needed to change somebody else's life. I always think people that smile at strangers are the kindest people. And I used to, I mean, I used to have my glasses on and, you know, everybody looking at everybody, but I would like never smile just because I was a little scared and introverted. And now I really try to smile at everybody. And after COVID, people get a little weird about it still. They're just like, why are you smiling at me? I'm like, because I love you. I love everybody. I'm a golden retriever in a human body. So. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> that's a lovely one yeah <laughs> yes so before i wrap up i do want to read your quote um it will be all over my social media but i wanted to make sure that it got on the episode as well because um i identify with this profoundly you said my wish is to inspire viewers to explore spirituality and to look at the bigger picture perspective of their life when we see how everything fits together and there are no mistakes we will be we will begin to grasp the perfection and the love that is the foundation of everything. Bravo. Thank you, Cheyenne. Yes. Do you have anything else that you would like to say to all of our viewers and all of our friends today? Anybody out there that might be having a hard time, you can be like, hey, don't give up. The one thing is that we are here to love. And love is not a feeling, love is a decision. That's very important. We decide to love. We can love anybody without any purpose. That's one. Second thing is be grateful. Find a smallest thing where you can be grateful for. The tiniest, tiniest sort of thing. Uh, maybe count, count your blessing, that old song, but be grateful, be grateful. And the uh, last one, you are never, ever, ever alone. So I think that, I think there uh, are three things where we can sort of maybe focus if we wish to. Those are all perfect. Gratitude, knowing that you're not alone, and wow, just we are love. That's my favorite. All right, well, before we get out of here, I do always share music with all of my friends, and I share music I love, and I share concert experiences that I've had. And one of the recent concert experiences I had was at Hollywood Casino Amphitheater in Maryland Heights, Missouri, and me and my concert family went to go see Dead & Company which are the rest of the members and a couple extra members of the original Grateful Dead. So Mm. we are going to showcase the track, what is it, Black Threaded Wind. It's on the original Steal Your Face album that came out in 1976. But we're going to hear a little clip of Bob Weir getting into it with John Mayer as we uh, head out of the episode. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you can come on and share your knowledge again. And you know that I will obviously be sharing your videos more because you've, you've been my lunch date for a while, Hans. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Cheyenne. Thank you so much for asking me on, on this program. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I love it. Stay, stay tuned for the music, bud. Well, everything twice, drop me a